have to attract the reader with your beginning. If your beginning is good, then half the work is already done. So, I try to write a very interesting and an interesting beginning. So, here I have some uh, suggestions, uh, some points that you can look at um, to, to work on your beginning to, so that it appeals to your reader. Uh, but these are not hard and fast rules. As you know, for everything related to writing, they, these are kind of, uh, everything is flexible. You can always uh, innovate, you can find your own way, but still it's uh, good to uh, know certain uh, basic rules and keep them at the back of your head so that through your subconscious they can help in your writing. So uh, when writing beginnings, uh, one thing uh, that is important is sometimes the beginning should be a snapshot of your story. The first sentence or the first paragraph at least should give an idea where the story is headed, uh, who are the main characters, what is the setting. So uh, try to make your beginning uh, a snapshot of your story. Of course there are many exceptions but uh, it's, a, it's a good idea to keep at the back of your head. Then the beginning should be intriguing. You know? For certain kinds of stories, of course, if it's a mystery or a thriller, uh, even for a fantasy, the beginning should be intriguing. If you write an intriguing beginning, then the reader will be uh, drawn to your story quite quickly. So try to uh, have a few words there, or the way you structure your sentences, try to make it an intriguing beginning. Uh, if you are looking at uh, Rose for Emily, then in the first sentence, uh, what, does, what does the author write. He uses certain words like curious uh, that that will draw the reader into the story. So the reader will be intrigued. If, we, if, we, if one of you can uh, read it out to me or I have it here. Uh, Rose for Emily begins with this uh, longish sentence which goes, uh, let me just pull it up. Uh, yeah. When Emily Grierson died, our whole town went to her funeral. The men threw a sort of respectful affection for a fallen monument. The women, mostly out of curiosity, mark that word, curiosity, to see the inside of our house, the reader will be intrigued, which no one save an old manservant, a combined gardener and cook, had seen in at least 10 years. So, you see all these words evoking intrigue, is there in this uh, first paragraph that Faulkner writes uh, in Rose for Emily and then he goes on to describe the house. So intrigue is very important for certain kinds of stories. Here uh, Faulkner is kind of writing a gothic, southern gothic fiction. If you are writing that kind of a story, a mystery or a thriller, it's, it's a good idea to build that intrigue in the first paragraph or the first sentence itself. Then uh, if you look at a different kind of story which is uh, the good man is hard to find. Uh, Flannery O'Connor. There, uh, do you remember the first line? It was, uh, the grandmother didn't want to go to Florida. Here the intrigue is more subtle. So when you read that first sentence, you will know, uh, you will ask yourself, why, what was the problem with Florida? Why is the sentence in past tense? What happened to the grandmother or the family? which you are introduced to in the, in, in the, in the next paragraph of some, some So that is also kind of a, 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 a beginning sentence, a, a first sentence which draws the reader towards the, towards the plot, into the plot. Uh, and see, in, in Flannery Corner, the sentence is a short, very short sentence. So, uh, so it's up to you, depending on your plot or your style, very short beginning which conveys a little information, intrigues the reader a little, can be very effective in drawing your reader into, into the plot and making him or her read the story, which is of course the, what we all want to do. So a snapshot, the beginning should be a snapshot, it should be intriguing, it should be pithy, short, it should be sometimes, not always. It should be informative. Uh, in certain cases, information is very important so that the reader doesn't feel lost, he or she should get an idea where we, where, where we are taking him, where the author is taking him, what is the setting. So information, uh, if you look at Faulkner's story, 
the rows for Emily. There's quite a lot of information in that first two, one or two lines. So even in Flannery O'Connor's uh, A Good Man is Hard to Find, uh, the, the author provides... Uh, there's quite a bit of information there. Miss Emily Grierson is dead. Mm. The, neighbors are the neighbors are curious. The women are curious. The neighbors want to see the inside of her house. She had a manservant man who was a gardener and a, then it of course should be well written. This is very, very important. After you finish writing a story, when you do the edits, you should polish your beginning and, of, and, and the end too, which we will discuss later. The beginning should be very well written. If your beginning is sloppy, if your beginning is not uh, intriguing enough, if it's not informative, if it's not pithy, you don't draw the reader. You have to work hard on the beginning. If you dedicate 10 hours to, uh, to editing your story, you have to give at least 2-3 to three hours for the beginning and the ending. So, yeah, this is very important. And the narrative pull, which is again linked to the intrigue part, uh, the beginning should have something in it which will pull the reader on to the next part of the story, which will pull the uh, pull us into the plot, which will make us read uh, read on. So narrative pull should be there. So let us look at one more story, which is uh, which we have, uh, which we are going to read uh, later in this class. It is Arthur C. Clarke's Nine Billion Names of God. It's a very interesting story. I I'm sure some of you have read it already uh, because it was in the lesson plan. How he intrigues us and how he draws us into the story. It's, it begins like this. This is a slightly unusual request, said Dr. Wagner, with what he hoped was commendable restraint. As far as I know, it's the first time anyone's been asked to supply a Tibetan monastery with an automatic sequence computer. Just look at these two lines. This, they are like marvelous how, the, how they draw the reader into the plot. He uses this word unusual. Faulkner is using the word curious in Rose for Emily. He is using unusual. These create intrigue and then he goes on to describe why it's unusual because he says that as far as I, do, as I know it's the first time anyone's been asked to supply a Tibetan monastery with an automatic computer, sequence computer, which might be something kind of a super very powerful computer. So a Tibetan monastery is ordering a sequence computer, the reader immediately is pulled into the plot. He will read the, he will go on reading. These are all parts of craft of, of improving your story and the beginning there is very important so focus on the beginning and keep these points in mind at the back of your mind not at the top of your mind because then it will encroach into your writing